let me show you how to make a simple rainbow text effect in Photoshop. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know that I'm biting the idea for this text tutorial from YouTube's Creators on the Rise promo design that you can see right here. I'm going to use the same colors as the text and the background and everything, but I'm going to tweak it just slightly. All right, so to get started, let's just fill in the background with this same kind of blue background here. So I'm going to click on layer zero. I'll just name that background really quick. I'm going to click on it, go edit, down to fill. Then I'll just move this out of the way and set it for contents instead of white. I'm going to click and select color. And then with my color picker, I'm just going to click on this right here. You can match my color code right here if you want the same color. So D2F5FD and then click OK and click OK. That'll fill in the background to be the exact same as this one. Next, we're going to write the base text for the rise part right here. So I'm going to go to my text tool. Then I'm just going to click in the middle and you can see that my text is already in there. So I'm using my text as interstate and that's just from Adobe fonts. So you can go and find the exact same one if you want my same look. I chose ultra black. There's different thicknesses, but I just chose that one. You can try other ones if you want. And for right now, my size is 225, but I'm going to type in instead of rise, I'm going to type easy. And I think if I highlight this, I think I want to make it a little bit bigger, maybe 250. And if you see here, the reason why I chose this font is really because of this S. So the S here is slanted and it creates this kind of little, you know, fading effect right there. Same with the E. So the Y will create that same effect for me and the slant on the S right here. Plus it's a fat font, which kind of resembles this. If you don't want to use interstate, pick anything else. It's a fat font that looks like this rise one and the effect will look pretty good. Okay. So now let's deal with the spacing of our letters. So I'm going to double click back on here to go back in. I'm going to go over to character right here. If you don't see character, go up to window and then down to character right there. And within this, we're really just dealing with, this one right here. So you might have yours at zero and you want to just minus it a little bit, like go into the minuses so that the letters connect. Like right here, there's a little gap between the R and the I, but then the S with the I and the S with the E, they kind of connect, maybe not up there. So I'm going to just make sure they each letter kind of connects in a little way right there. And then you can also adjust the height and whatever your font. So you can see I put in 120 right here. So the original font was a little bit shorter like that. I just went in here and typed in 120 to make it a little bit taller because this font was a little bit taller. And then the last thing for our base font here for our base text is the color. So I'm just going to click on my color up here. You could have also clicked right here for the color. And I'm going to use my picker again, this little target to click that blue in the back there. So again, if you want to match this exact same color, it's right here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 6. From now on, I'm just going to list this code up on the screen as I do it. Okay, and then just click OK and close character and then move it into place. Okay, so now all we have to do is make multiple copies of the same text to create this kind of rainbow effect. So to make the first copy, I'm going to go Command or Control J. You can see that easy copy comes up there. Then we're just going to double click within the T and click on our color and pick the next color. So I'm just going to pick this purple right here. You can see the code again on the screen. I'm going to click OK. And then here is the most important thing. So I'm going to click check. The most important thing is to go Commander Control T. Even though we could just use the move tool to move it, we want to go Commander Control T so you get the box, the transform box around. And then you can either click and move it you know, in combination with your arrow keys on the keyboard to create kind of the shadow and like offset effect. So move yours to whatever you like. And then when you're done, just click check. And then instead of doing that again, we're going to go control shift and alt on a PC or command shift option on a Mac, then just hit T. And while you can't really see it on the screen just yet, what that does is that makes a copy of this easy, but applies the exact same transform movement that we did for this one. So if I do it again, I'm going to do it three more times. So I'm going to hold control shift alt and hit T again. Then I'm going to hit T again and T again. 
So that made four more copies. I'm just gonna hide four, hide three, hide two, and then go back to this one. Now all we have to do is change the colors. So I'm gonna double click here, go into this color, select this one right there, which is this code, click OK, that one's done. Then I'm gonna click the eyeball here for easy copy two, double click, go in, I'm gonna pick the next color, which is this kind of orange there, click OK, then I'm gonna to go to the next one, copy three, double click, click here, pick on this kind of orange, OK, click this eyeball, go to the fourth one, double click, click on here, click on the yellow, and OK. Now if I click check, you'll see that they're exactly the same transformation away from each other, and I have the exact same colors that exist over here on the original image. But if we do zoom in, you're gonna see up here that I think there's a little bit of a drop shadow around just the rise as well. So for now, just so we're matching this one, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So on this top layer, the top easy, I'm gonna double click to the right over here. That's gonna bring up the layer style menu. And I'm just gonna go right down to the bottom here and click on drop shadow, not on the box, click on the actual word drop shadow. And then we're just gonna play around with a few things in here. I'm gonna click on the color and I think I'm gonna make it the orange color, kind of matching the one that was underneath a little bit, maybe a little bit, you know, a darker version, maybe a little bit more red there. I'm gonna click OK. And then you're just playing around with this stuff here. So I'm gonna bring the distance right down, I think, the spread right down to start. And I'm just gonna play around with the size here. So give it a little bit of a fade right there and probably opacity I'm gonna keep it around 50% somewhere around there, just a little bit. Okay, so once you're good with your shadow, just click OK. And that pretty much ends the main part here, but I'm gonna add creators on the rise, and then I'm gonna do one kind of thing at the end to make it a little bit unique from the original. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the type tool. I'm gonna click again, but this time I'm not gonna use interstate. I'm gonna use usual. So that's just another font I got from the Adobe fonts. I'm gonna click on that one. I'm gonna drop this down quite a bit to start, maybe even try like 60 and just type in creators. I'm gonna highlight it, go up to my color and I'm just gonna pick this color for that gray. So again, three, four, three, four, three, four. Click okay, then just click check. Then we're gonna go command or control T to rotate it. So go out to the corner until you see the curvy thing like this and rotate it, or you can type right in here, negative 90. Then I'm gonna click my move tool and move it into place. So I was close on the font size. The S just goes a little bit beyond, so we can fit in the on the up there. And this kind of lines up right even at the bottom there. So I'm gonna use the kind of guidelines to line it up, move it a little bit closer. So now all I have to do is do the on the part. So I'll go back to the type tool, I'll click again, I'm gonna type in on the, highlight it, and I'm gonna drop this down, I'll try like 30, something like that. And just because this looks like it's a little bit flatter, I'm gonna go back into character, and instead of 120, like I still have that 120% from the other one, I'm just gonna drop this one down to 100. I'm gonna leave creators, because I think this one might be a little bit taller, I don't know, but I'll just leave it because I like the way that looks. Then I'm gonna go to my move tool and slide this into place. So that kind of flattened it a little bit so I can, you can see the guidelines there, allowed me to line it up right with the top of this S as well. And there you go, we've created the creators on the rise thing here. But now I'm gonna alter this to make it a little bit unique, okay? So for now I'm just gonna hide on the and creators. I'm also gonna hide the drop shadow from easy. And all I'm gonna do is click on my top easy, hold shift, click on my bottom easy, and then put them in a group. So this little folder thing here or command or control G. So that puts them all in a group here. I'm just gonna double click and type in easy. Then all we're gonna do is go to the right over here, double click again to bring up our layer style menu again. This time we're gonna put on a stroke. So again, click on the word stroke, not the box. And for color, I think it looks pretty good with white. So just click on that, make it white. 
Make sure your position is outside, not inside or center, and then play around with the size that you want. So I think I like 40, maybe, maybe even 50, a little bit wider there. And then when you're good, click OK, and now you have an outline. But I think I'm going to add a drop shadow to the whole thing as well. So again, go to the right over here, double click, that'll bring us back in, and click on the word drop shadow. This time, I'm going to make sure the background, like the color, is black. And I think we'll keep it at 90. I'm going to make the distance a lot more, the size a lot more, and I'm going to put some spread in. So you can see it kind of showing up along the bottom there, but not on the top because of distance and the angle here. I'm going to keep it at 50. So you can just play around to see how much shadow or whatever you want. This kind of blurs it, like fades it a little bit more. So I think somewhere around 100 something looks pretty good. And then I'm going to click OK again. And now if we want, we can go and put the other text back in. But instead of creators, I'm just going to change this to Photoshop. And this one I'm going to change to text effect to match the thumbnail as well. And then put it in its final position right about there. Hide this and we're done. For other easy text effects in Photoshop, make sure to check out one of the videos that's on the screen right now.